So this is my unpopular opinion about farm attacks in South Africa. How's it going guys? Welcome back to Quentin and the Gun Guy. I hope you guys enjoy this new new background that I've got for all my videos. It was quite a bit of work. But anyway, let's get back to the video. This is Unpopular Opinion. This is a new series that I'm kicking off. I'll be tackling some, some difficult to tackle topics. I um, hope you guys enjoy and then you will follow along with, with my train of thought. I um, hope you guys do find some common ground with me. Um, but it is going to be an interesting journey. In this video, we'll be tackling the problem of farm attacks in South Africa. Um, it's a very difficult, difficult thing to talk about, but I think we need to talk about it more, get some awareness out. Um, but I've got, I've got an interesting opinion on this, but let's get going. So before we can tackle the current state of affairs, we need to go through some history. So history about myself and history about the, the problem of farm attacks. So a bit of history on myself first, I grew up on a farm uh, from about my mid-teens to my mid-twenties when I moved out of the house because of aviation. Uh, I used to be a, a flight instructor so I just moved because of because of work and then I got I got into the family business so I am staying in town now. Um, so I've got that, that bit of background staying on farm. I've got quite a few friends staying on farms, um, I've got quite a, quite a few relatives staying on farms and then I've got friends making living on farms as well, either working, working on farms or that's doing uh, outfitter, uh, professional hunter, because they, they spend quite a bit of time on, on farms as well, uh, making their living that way. Now let's go to the history of the problem itself, meaning farm tax. So it isn't a new thing. Um, it's been around since the first settlement in, in the Cape, um, but also the Central, Central African tribes that, that moved down. Um, so it's not just a white problem, it's a white and a black problem. Multicultural, multiracial. Um, both sides, farms were attacked, cattle were, were taken, um, people were killed, um, now in the cave, farmhouses were burned down. So it definitely isn't a new problem for South Africa. Um, it is maybe getting worse. The type of attacks are, are getting worse as well. Um, but that isn't translated in the crime stats. If you look at crime stats exclusively, you'll see that home invasions are vastly more than, than farm attacks or farm murders. Um, that's, just, that's just the way it is. There's more houses than, than there are farms. So if you look at that, then it doesn't look like it's, it's such a, a big problem. But because of political and um, economical reasons, the type of attacks are worse. Um, so it's a lot more brutal. And that's, that's what sets this apart from, from having just a normal home invasion. So the question that everyone's asking on social media is when is it going to get better? I quite like the, the response from, from Portis. Um, their approach is that it's not just going to get better, you need to, to make it get better. Um, so that's, that's the main thing. You need to be proactive in, in this approach. Um, you can't just sit around and, and hopefully it's going to get better and it's just going to, to dissolve um, there's not going to be farm tax anymore. It's 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 not logical. Um, you need to be proactive. You need to do something to to sharpen it, to sharpen up your security, um, your diligence, your training um, to to try and eradicate the, the problem. Evil doesn't just go away. Um, evil needs to be er eradicated by good. So you need to to do some good to get rid of that evil. So the question about firearms. Now, being a farmer in South Africa is one of the most dangerous jobs that, that there is. So there's a question that some, some people are asking on social media of, do we expect farmers to carry their farm with them all the time? When they go out to church, when they go out to feed the cattle or the sheep, um, or just to do whatever on their farm? Well, the short answer is yes, I expect you to carry your farm with you. Um, I live in town now, I've got my farm with me Permanently, I, I'm, I'm doing a video now and I've got my farm with me. My wife has her farm with her permanently. My brother has his farm with him. My whole family basically does. Um, if you have a self-defense farm, what's the use of it being in the, in the safe? It needs to be with you. Now the question of carrying a farm with you on the farm. So we, we saw the farm quite recently. 
But my mom carried the 3 a special with her and then upgraded to Glock. Now she's quite a short lady, small frame. Um, if she can carry around a firearm, so can you. My stepdad carried around a CZ75B. Um, now anyone in the firearms community knows that it is quite a heavy, heavy firearm to carry. My brother has a uh, Beretta 92 FS. He carried that with him permanently as well. So that's just a bit of background. Um, the thing about a firearm is you, if you have it, um, you need to carry it with you. Um, so if you don't have it with you, it's, it's a lot like a parachute. So if you need it and you don't have it, you're never going to need it again. So just for that one time, that statistical zero point something percent that you might ever need it. Um, that's, that's one time that you, that you have to carry it with you, but you never know that before. And that's the exact same reason why we, why we wear seatbelts in the car. Now with regards to your firearm as well, is there's no point in having a firearm and not getting training with it. Um, you need to, to get training, but not just you as the, as the man, the protector of the house. Um, the problem with nowadays is that the attackers go for the man of the house first. In eliminating that threat means that the rest of the family is basically defenseless. So if you train the rest of your family as well, meaning especially your wife, um, the chances are going to be good that the wife is going to save the day and save, save a family. Um, so the best is to get her a firearm as well and get her as good a training as, as what you have. Um, depending on the age of, of your children as well, you need to get them training um, in case something goes wrong, um, in case that they maybe get, get your firearm if you are wounded, something like that. Um, that's just going to stack, stack the odds in your favor and against the attackers. The more people that's gonna give them a hard time or eliminate the threat even, uh, the more, more or better your chances of, of survival. So get training. Get training on not just your firearm, but empty and skills as well. Uh, you might not have your firearm with you, your firearm, your firearm might be taken away. So that empty, empty handed skills, I'm a big believer in empty handed skills. That's, that needs to form your foundation. Um, so do whatever training, I'm, I'm not going to connect this to, to whichever organization. Um, this is just straight my opinion. So according to the United Nations and the Constitution of South Africa, you've got a right to life. Um, so you've, you've got a right to make a living and to live. Um, to basically exist here on, on planet Earth. But that right doesn't guarantee survival. That's a totally different thing. Um, so survival, that depends on you. Waiting for the police to show up or waiting for security to show up, um, that's not going to save your life. Um, so you need to be able to engage whatever is threatening your life. So that's the difference between being a victim um, and being a survivor. So you need to have that survival mentality. So staying on mentality, that's my next point as well. You need to have a big mind, mind shift. So if you stay on a farm, look at what your, your routines are. Do you have a set routine? Um, are you away a lot? Um, is it certain time, certain days? Uh, people I know and then very, very close friends of mine. The problem is that they never had a farm attack in the area. So then, of course, you feel safe. But there's always that one time. So because the area is relatively a safe zone, they go out at specific times during the week, specific weekdays, specific times. Um, a lot of times leaving their family alone at the house or leaving their wife alone at the house. Now that's probably the worst thing you can do is being one person alone at the house. Um, specific routines, make yourself a target, you need to mitigate the risk and try to try to be a difficult target, unpredictable. Um, so that's just going to make you a difficult target and get those attackers to maybe move on to the next farm or move on to the next area. So that all depends on if your community around you is going to be a solid chain. Um, if it's going to be a broken chain, it's not going to be strong. So you need to make sure that there's a support system coming right through. And that's it guys, I did this video in English, um, English being my, my second language, Afrikaans being my first. Um, doing this, this in Afrikaans limits, limits the base and limits my reach quite a bit. Um, this being a multiracial, multicultural problem, um, you need to get, get the word out um, about training, uh, being vigilant, um, guaranteeing your own survival. 
Um, so please, if you if you found this interesting and you think that I made made a few few good points, uh, please send this to some of your your friends or family sitting on farms. Um, we we really need to to keep our, our whole community safe. Um, so keeping them safe means that they're going to keep on farming, keep on producing the food that we need. We can't just import all the food. Um, so that's that's going to keep South Africa safe and fed. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Have a good one.